Hello everyone, today we're going to see how to succeed at king hunting. Now, first of all, I just want to get this clear, what is a king hunt? A king hunt is when you manage to get your opponent's king in the center of the board. Could be on g5, could be on e5, could even be on e7. Doesn't have to be too far out of their zone, could be as, as far out as e7. The most popular example of a king hunt is as follows, was played by Edward Lasker with the white pieces here. Queen takes h7, king takes, knight takes f6, double check on the king, king goes up, and then you see this is where the king hunt begins. The king is at the center of the board on g5 here, and we are hunting the king down. Really like hunting, hunting, hunting. <laughs> like back in the days. King g2, and then rook h2 check, putting the king, forcing the king down to g1, and now we have king d2 checkmate. Today we're going to look at various examples in which there are king hunts and how to find the checkmate. Now on example number one we have a classic. The king has just been hunted to e7 from this bishop takes f7 check and now the king is in the center. Now the first tip that I have for you in king hunts is to look for potential checks. The reason is, is that the more checks you get in, the more likely you have a checkmate. So. Here we're going to take an inventory of the number of checks that we have, not ruling out the dumb checks. So here we would have a ton of dumb checks like queen e5, but never rule out stupid checks because that's most likely what your opponent is not looking at. Here we have queen e5, queen takes f6, and we have knight d5. That's only what I'm seeing, right? Uh, on queen e5, we can rule this out because on the two types of takes that we have here, there's no follow-up. I'm not seeing a knight d5 that works. Nish. On knight d5 check, this mimics checkmate. It's very close to checkmate looking, right? If it weren't for this knight taking on d5, I think it would be completely winning for the white pieces. And the third and final check is queen takes f6. Queen takes f6 is also tricky because black can take back in two separate ways, with the king and with the pawn. Now, we have to calculate this before we play this move in the real game. Why? Because if you play it first and then it doesn't work, you're down a queen. So you have to calculate everything first, especially when doing a risky sacrifice. So let's calculate together. Queen takes f6. If g takes f6, what are some follow-up moves that we can play here? I'll give you a couple seconds and pause the video. Okay, now that you're here in the video, here with queen takes f6, what's really nice about this move is that we're taking out the defender to the d5 square. So when queen takes f6 and g takes, this d5 square is vacant for our knight. Our knight that previously could not do knight d5, but now knight d5 check is check and mate on the king. And so let's look at what if king takes. On king takes, we have the same thing that we can try out, right? Knight d5, because the knight is still not there. The king cannot move back because of our knight on d5, so that's ruled out, and the king has to move forward. The king can't go to g6, can't go to e6, and can't take our knight on g5 either because of this bishop. N king e5, now we have to find a follow-up again. So king e5, we need to look at some checks. For reasons of illustration in this video, I'm going to play this out so it's easier for the viewer to follow along. So after check, the king has to go to e5, and now we have a couple candidate moves, right? Bishop f4 or f4 check. We even have, this one's a bit harder to find, knight f3 check. Really look at every single check possible. Remember, this knight is not very useful to the attack anymore because it doesn't, defending the bishop is not needed, right? So this knight can get out of there and do something else. Upon analysis, if we're very clever, we realize that after check here and check, the king can go away, right? Eventually find shelter, same for this f4, bishop e3, king c4, and the king b5 is very possible. And so here we would land on knight f3, the controversial, undefending the e4 pawn, knight f3. And here we will find out that the king cannot go to f4, king cannot go to d4, king cannot take this knight, nor go back because of this knight, and has to take on e4. And here the white pieces play knight c3 checkmate. 
an insane king hunt that stems from taking out the defender and always making sure the king escalates and, and climbs the board. Example two stems from a real game between amateurs. Here, bishop takes f7 was played, king takes and knight g4 check. A discovery on the king to get back the piece, plus one pawn that we took on f7. The king shouldn't have, but went up on f6. This creates a king hunt. The king on f6 attacks our knight. Now, the black pieces, being an amateur, it happens, didn't see that queen takes g4 defends our knight on that same move. It's beautiful. And instead, now the king being very, very weak and vulnerable, gives himself a little pocket of air here on the g7 square by playing g6. So here we would look at checks, right? Number one. So here we have one check, we have two checks on f4, and a third check on f3, and even a fourth check on e6. We have a lot of checks. So we have to weave out the bad checks that don't work. I think that knight d5 brings in another piece into the attack. It's very nice. King g7, and I think the king is a bit too far for us. Knight e6 does win the queen, but it doesn't checkmate. We want to do better. And so here, we'll see that queen f4 is a much better move because it forces the king only to one square. You really like forcing the opponent's king only to one square because that means that you're close to checkmate. And sure enough, after king g7 here, what do we have? Knight e6 checkmate. And the queen takes up h6, takes up f6 and f7, and we have this nice knight taking up the king square. And this is checkmate. Example number three is an endgame one. I know, we're diversifying. So here, in the endgame, the white pieces play the only likable check. I mean, knight c3 is okay, but the king goes to c4, and you don't want the king landing on a square that attacks a piece, gives tempo for the opponent, gives that initiative, and takes yours away. So you want the initiative, a4 check, right? The only check that really forces the king to one square. We like this pattern. If the king were to go here, we have knight takes c5, and this is a pinned checkmate. So the king has to go up to c4. And now is our third or fourth tip, I don't remember anymore. Take up squares that the king would have used to exit. So we call these exit squares, of course. And here, what do we want to do? We want to pursue with this check. It's loud, and, it's loud and clear. We have no other checks here. But this check on d2 gives the exit square c3 because our knight leaves this square. So what we want to do on this move is a very nifty move. We want to take up this square and use that to our advantage to threaten checkmate. And so here it's white to play and win if you want to pause and solve. The white piece is played here bishop b2 taking up the c3 square and at the same time we are threatening this rook so it's a double threat of the sorts and we're threatening mate so what happened in the game is that black decided to defend on d2 we took on h8 and then as black wanted to equalize the game with taking on a1 what did we do knight d2 checkmate following up on those exit squares we have example number four and in this position, the king is hunted from the initial castling position and is now in the center. We want to take up exit squares, big theme in this one. And so here we don't look, it doesn't look like we have much, right? The king is about to escape to this queen side and we have to formulate a checkmate from by avoiding this king to go to d8, right? By taking up these squares and if the king goes to f8, we need to have checkmate there as well. So here we look at our checks, right? So we have bishop c5, that looks terrible. Um, I think just bishop takes c5, and this bishop is defended, attacking the queen. No, no, right? We also have the little ambitious queen takes f7. Uh, if king takes, rook h7 check, king g8, and I'm not seeing that much. And finally, this jumps to you the second you find it. Pause the video to solve. Here, white plays queen f6. And it's really important to know why we play queen f6 here. Queen f6 check 
takes up the exit square, first of all. And yes, we would calculate all of this before playing it in a real game. Takes up the exit square and creates a mating net for another possibility. So here on King F8, you've created a back rank checkmate. Beautiful. Which forces the black pieces to respond a certain way that we know and want. And so knight takes f6 is predictable. We know this in advance. It's beautiful. And here the follow-up is not necessarily takes or takes with a pawn because this king can just march out of here, right? We need to take up the exit squares. So white does an intermediate move, a Zwischenzug, German word meaning in between, in between check. That is bishop c5 check. And here, it doesn't really matter capturing this exit square because it's happening anyways, but we are taking up all of these exit squares by opening up this rook. And after you are forced to take, because it mimics checkmate, here we have e takes f6, or g takes f6, really doesn't matter. I don't know why I put emphasis on that. Taking up these squares, forcing the king to f8, and we're completing the mate in four with rook h8 checkmate. Going on to our fifth example is this cute game played in 1975 in which the king is being threatened by checkmate here. So king g7, queen f7, and king h6. The king is on the run. And I will walk 500 miles because I will walk 500 more. And here, king on h6, what should we do? It doesn't seem like we have really good checks. All the checks give a queen, especially this one. So white does something that's very nice, and this is another key to attacking the king. Involve other pieces into the attack. And in this position, white plays the very cute, very silent, deadly but silent, h4. h4 has per goal to open up the h-file on this king, knowing that black have no chance in the decision of whether or not to open up this file. They can't reject this proposal of h takes or g takes rook takes. They're in a bind. And white uses this to their advantage. Open up the file to bring in another piece, cover more squares. And so queen e8 is played to put a little fire under this queen. And here tempo moves, always tempo moves, always look for checks. We go for the rightful check here on g5, king takes immediately. And this is difficult. This is the level five for a reason. Because we have a lot of checks. One, two, uh, three, four, five, and maybe six. And to find the right one requires time, requires effort, requires dedication. If you want to pause to solve, it's white to play and checkmate in five moves. After rook h5, knight takes the queen cannot take on h5 because the queen would take, but queen f5 check, right? The king goes to h6, queen takes h5, and still does not happen. Queen takes h5. So this was very frustrating. And you come to find out that the winning move is the unexpected one, but unlocking a few squares, taking up those exit squares once again, is rook d5 check sacrificing look for risky moves another tip there sacrificing a rook to cover those exit squares for that king and here once the knight takes we have a multitude of options queen f5 is checkmate rook h5 is checkmate my personal favorite and so here the king has to go to f4 the white pieces need to play very accurately here because if they don't your queen's threatened and your attack might die down and these three squares, what great piece can take up these three squares all at once and still threaten mate next turn? Because we have that mate threat locked in. And that move is king f2. King f2, rem reminiscent from the beginning game that I showed you, king f2 here takes up all the moves of this king and threatens checkmate. And if you want to defend checkmate, let's say by queen d7, we just have rook e1, and we're threatening checkmate once again. And here, black cannot stop rook e4 checkmate on the next turn. I hope you enjoyed this video of how to hunt the king successfully in chess.